So Q equals quality. So people are going to decide they're only going to buy one unit, right? So they're only going to buy one, but they get a choice of what quality they're going to buy. Now, there's no reason we couldn't have them choosing multiple units and even multiple qualities. That's an OK model. It's just complicated. So I want to analyze the quality question. So I'm going to simplify my demand specification by assuming what I did here, which is 0 or 1. You're only going to buy one. Think about it. The guy's going to go in. He's going to buy a TV set. And he's deciding what quality of TV he wants. You can think for now that quality is just this unidimensional thing like how big the TV is. And he's deciding, am I going to get a 47-inch TV, a 50-inch TV, a 65-inch TV, a 75-inch TV, an 85-inch TV, 100-inch TV, whatever it is. It's the dimension of his TV. And I'm going to act as if, again, for keep my life simple, quality is a continuous dimension. So you can choose any size you want. You can choose 50.973 inches if that's what you want. Now, that's an unrealistic model as a description of reality, but it's going to be a nice one to work with because it's going to make things kind of simple to talk about. So we're going to think about in individuals having indifference curves over the quality of the TV and the price that they pay. Right? So that's going to be his specification. Okay. So you might say, well, geez, price, how does that go in the utility function? So think about if you started with a utility function, that you had u of, let's call it x in q, where x is other goods. So that's like all other goods combined, right? So x is the amount of other goods I consume. Let's just set px equals 1, kind of a very natural assumption, right? If I'm just going to lump all the other goods together, I'm just going to make them the numeraire good. I'm just going to assume x has price 1. I'm going to let m be your income. So then, of course, your budget constraint is x equals m minus p, right? Right? Everybody agrees with that. That is, the amount of x I get to consume is how much I didn't spend on a TV. Right? I got m to spend. I spend p on my TV. I get x left to consume. So then you just plug that in. This is equal to u of m minus x. I'm going to say m minus q. I'm going to say m minus p in q. And so that would be my utility function over p and q. And that's going to have some corresponding indifference curves. Now, a common assumption that people make is what people would call quasi-linear preferences, which is u of x and q equals x plus v of q, or something like that. Right? That is a common form they take which is basically to say I got a constant margin of utility of income because it's linear in x. And then it's really easy because then what you do, this is equal to m minus p plus v of q, which implies pick q to maximize v of q minus p of q where that's the market price for quality Q. That's how much you pay for a Paul, for good of quality Q. Because right? you're going to maximize the value less the cost of the TV. Okay, So that would be a simple model. Now that has the unattractive assumption that quality is not a normal good. right? If you assume this utility function, you're going to get quality is not a normal good. That is, M doesn't matter. For the choice of for the choice of Q. Whereas if you go back to a more simple, more general utility function like this, if you make Q normal, then you'll get the usual kind of result that Q will be a normal good in this dimension. Right? So quasi-linear is the most popular model, model that people use. 
But as a descriptive model of behavior, it's probably not going to work out real well if you're trying to understand differences by income, because we know income is a generally a pretty good predictor of quality. Why is income a good predictor of quality? Why do people, as income goes up, consume higher quality goods generally and not just more? Yeah. Well, yeah, but more generally. There's some sort of physical constraint out there, right? That is, whether it's the amount of food you want to eat or how many t movies you can watch at the same time or whatever. Right, there's some kind of physical constraint. So one way to think about the world is quality. Why would people go up the quality ladder? Why wouldn't they go up the quality ladder even when they're poor? Just buy a little bit of the high quality one. How would you think about modeling that? Has anybody got a good model for thinking about that? I mean, think about, think about if you had a model that says utility equals u of x comma. Now, I assumed you could only buy one unit, which kind of forced you to go on quality. But let's say you did something simpler. You made this a n times v of q minus, all right? Or plus lambda m minus x minus n p of q. If you did that, what do you think people would do if you had that utility function? How do you think people would behave if you had that utility function? Right? This would be like I'm buying n units of this good. Cost is a function of quality, P of Q. Well, look at it. Call this Z, okay? Z. Okay, now how would you express the budget constraint as a function of Z? So this would be U plus U of X comma Z plus lambda M minus X minus, well, Put, put this in terms, I'm going to need n times v is going to be z, so I'm going to put it z times p of q over v of q. Right? Right? Everybody agree with that? That would be my budget constraint? What would that predict about q? What? Why? v of q. No, but think about it. What does it mean? How would it vary with stuff like income or preferences? Like, how would it vary as you changed? How would it vary as you changed? Or as M changed? What would you have an incentive to do? Wouldn't there just be some Q star that would minimize that ratio? That would be like the efficient quality level, right? That is, there would be a Q star that would be the efficient quality level. Everybody would say, geez, I'm just going to buy this thing in the most efficient units, right? Everybody would be out there saying, you know, there's an optimal size. And then if I want more, I'll just buy more of the optimal size, right? There would, be, there would be an optimal size or quality of the product, and the rich people would buy just more of that optimal quality, and the poor people would buy less, and the people who really liked the good would buy lots of the optimal quality, and people who didn't like the good would buy very few, right? There would be just this optimal quality. You know, you could think about it is, you know, that's what people are, you know, they would say, well, I'm trying to get something out of it. What gives me the most? What's the most efficient 
consumption I can engage in. So according to my question from before, you have to get out of that model somehow. Right? Now one view of the world is that, well, there's kind of the cost, there's a limit on end. Right? That would be one world. One world is just a limit on n. There's a constraint, like n less than or equal to n upper bar. Right? That is, you just have a certain capacity in your stomach. Think about this as like eating, whatever. There's a certain capacity, and once you hit the capacity, more generally, you just need some rising cost. Then you have a nice way to think about it, because what's going to happen as your income goes up? Well, you can't just buy more of the more efficient stuff. So you're going to have to get pushed up the quality ladder. That is, you're going to have to get more satisfaction by actually cutting back and making, you know, actually buying goods that are more cost per unit of whatever this thing provides. And that would be a simple way to do it. And that's a useful model, I think, for thinking about quality. That people go up the quality ladder because there's some kind of physical constraint. Maybe it's stomach capacity, maybe it's you know time in the day, maybe it's you know the number of cars you can drive at the same time. It's all that kind of idea that there's some physical limit that would then force you to buy things that cost more per unit of, 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 of productivity. And the reason you need that or something along those lines is because you have to explain why the poor people don't just buy less of the higher quality goods, right? They don't, that is, you, you need some force. And this isn't the only way you can model it, but I think it's a nice way to think about modeling it. There's some sort of physical constraint. 